With your dad being a musician and and like running his own bands, do you think he was? Did he get you into reading straight away? Right. He 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 did many amazing things for me. My dad, when he bought me the bass, there's a box with this bass, and it was a uh, Gibson semi. It was like a, a copy of a Gibson semi acoustic, yeah, like EB one or EB three yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One pickup, one pickup, uh, and I didn't have an amplifier. So I played, started playing with a pick. So I played with a pick for five, first five, six years. Really? I, never, yeah. I didn't, never played Fingerstone because I yeah. couldn't hear it. Because yeah. I didn't have an amp. <laughs> didn't have an amp. But what, what he also bought me was a book, the Mel Bay bass guitar method. Book. Yeah, yeah. It was pink, I think, I remember. So I got this shining thing out of the, the box, amazing, put it there. And he said, right, there you go. And there's page one. And it went, right, there's an F, right? And there's the F on the thing. So from the very first time, you actually picked up a bass. I, I, you were a bass. I, I, I saw what the note was, bass clef, what the note was, and it and it showed you. I don't know first position, and it had a little a little tune that you could play, and you go yeah, yeah, yeah. like this and going fabulous. I mean, that's the way to do it. I mean, yeah. The, yeah, because the, there's no the, kind of, the, sort of the, like transition. You know, all the jokes about guitar players, put a, how to keep, keep them quiet, is put a piece of music in front of is, is because when you get a guitar, you go ding, oh, have it. Have yeah, it. You yeah know, so. it's like that's, it's brilliant, isn't it? But you never go <laughs> on top of our snow, <laughs> like you did on the yeah, bass. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so by the time you go, oh, I better learn to read. You don't want to go back. Do yeah, you? you don't have to do you the know, transition. But I started into, yeah. right on the right on the floor, and I, and I thank me dad. He's not with us anymore, but thank you for that because well, I'm here because I can read. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, See, was uh, that a sort of like an amazing? Obviously, it's a great skill to have, right? Well, but, yeah, I mean, my, on my journey, I'm here. You're you're sitting here, and I'm sitting here because I can read. I mean, other read. people can't read a note, don't know what um, a minor seven chord is, you know, and they do really well as as well. We, I mean, you Where know, did the harmony come from? Like understanding, did you, was your dad into it? Was yeah, he like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he was a jazz, yeah. jazz piano player. Oh, right. He, so did, he yeah. didn't do studio work. I mean, I always, from the moment I started, I, would, I wanted to be in recording studio. Right, okay, that yeah. was always my thing. I mean, I love playing live as well. I mean, yeah. it's not, I don't, didn't just want to do that, but for a professional musician, the, the top of, of my dad's business, my, his thing, yeah. was the guys who worked in recording studios. So and that's that what time, you wanted to do, yeah. I did, and I thought, if I get good enough, I can do that all day long. I mean, the stories of they made absolute fortunes, aren't more than the Prime Minister. I mean, I knew yeah, all those yeah. guys, because I met them through my dad. Um, uh, great characters, and at times, you know, I knew all the guys who played on all the uh, all the Tom Jones records in the sixties. It's not unusual, yeah. You know, and they'd go from studio to studio, eight thirty in the morning jingles for an hour, then ten o'clock at Dabby Road, then two till five, and then seven till ten. I thought that's for yeah, me. Yeah. That's same as the Wrecking Crew, right? Yeah, Have yeah. You seen that yeah, documentary? Same yeah, thing, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly the same, and that's that's what I've always wanted to do. I mean, in, to some degree, I. I do do that. Yeah. I have done that, and I still do it. But um, not. I thought it was going to be all week and all day, and then you know, and it, and yeah, it, yeah, and it, it was a little bit like midnight, for me. Yeah. In the eighties, was really busy. I did lots of sessions. I didn't do anything else really. Uh, but that's dropped off considerably since then. <laughs> since then, and also yeah. the skills that you need in those days, it was. I mean, when I first started doing sessions, you walked in and they went right music. Here we go. One maybe one run through red light ding. All right, next one, and that's the level you had to sight read at. Yeah. Um, before click, it was before click, so drummers had to play. Um, you know, had to have fantastic time. Absolutely, you had to. One, have, yeah. uh, you had to uh, rhythm sections had to more more had to read than interpret. Because right, okay, uh, yeah. in those days, they were fabulous arrangers and they used to write everything out, the notes, everything. And it was, you had to play with feel, but off the page, you know, from the notes on the page. Yeah. So the people who got booked were people who could sight read, um, uh, play great on when the red light went on and read it and play it with feeling. As over the years, yeah. so like there were guitar players who weren't great feel players, but they could... Read, read bass really players well. who could read, uh, but weren't really 
you know, they didn't have their sound together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and then you got people coming, famous players coming through, like Herbie Flowers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was, you know, the first person to start putting things in, and, and you know, he was a fab... Like interpreting it, yeah, doing inter- it, adding his own style it, into exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it was very much, you had to be able to read it first. And it's, sometimes if you played not what was on the page, you'd get a hard time. You'd say, really? No, no, read, no read that. Yeah, and no, did you no, have no. any passes through, or was it like literally, there's your... No, well, I mean, you know, some... It, 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 it's weird, really. I mean, when I think about it now, because... I'll tell you a story. There was a young bass guitar player phoned me and said, can I come sit next to you on a session? And he asked in a nice way. People, people do do that. And, yeah. and, but, um, and I said, yeah, come, come. And we did, uh, we went to Angel and it was all my mates on it. All of my mates that I've been working with in studios for years and years. Ian Thomas yeah. on drums, da 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 da, whatever. And we get in this kid, this kid, I think he was at Trinity College. Oh, right, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, he sat next to me, and of course, there's the banter is like, you know, ferocious, it's, right. absolutely yeah, yeah. ferocious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think I cocked something. I oh, know, no, that's right. We did some, it was for children in need, and there was like a big pad of music. We did this thing where the newscasters all sing some Duran Duran song, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, the horns were having trouble getting it together. So we played it through, they put the light on. And uh, at the end, Steve Sibber was the MD. And I said, uh, Steve, do I have to do that again? I said, I was, that was fine. He went, yeah, that's fine. So I sat there. And of course, I got a hard time from the horns going, oh, all right, you were all right, were you? <laughs> anyway, the next cue was a load of uh, pre-recorded plays. <laughs> And it was uh, it was in three eight or something and a five eight bar and I just cocked it up massively yeah. and I got massive stick from everybody. <laughs> oh, you all right on that one? Were you? Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, there's all this mayhem going on and we yeah. finished really early and we went to the pub and this kid sort of sat there and went, I don't believe you. I said, well, What's the boss up? He went, Well, the bloke I I uh, uh, study with at college said We're, you're never allowed to make a mistake in a recording studio. <laughs> and I said, Oh my god! Well, now you know the truth. You know, yeah, I'll, be, yeah, I'll be yeah. on other things where you're sitting there in a huge orchestra where they ain't going to stop for you, and you go, "Well, oh, can I do mine again?" Yeah, you ain't yeah, gonna be there. Gonna keep so going, it's yeah. a question of like you have to if this timing is. Okay, if anything you know, falls off, you just got to keep going. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, and it's that's the pressure, really. And, yeah. and things that are hard to play um, are not necessarily uh, the hard things to do. I mean, the yeah, hardest yeah. thing is sitting in a on a film queue where um, you've got 68 bars and rest, and there's a 3-4 bar and a 2-4 bar and a 5-8 bar. It might, if you're lucky, it'll be on click. Yeah. And what I do is on the first run through, I've got 68 bars rest. Okay, okay. count like, like crazy and write oboe comes in here because that won't be written. Yeah, so yeah, every time you go, cute, just yeah. like next time, bar 14, oboe. <clears throat> and so the next time you do it, you go, the oboe's in after bar 14, you go, oh, well, at least I've got there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You're coming up with things, things in, coming in. in uh, handy little chunks, you know. Yeah. But then... The hard thing then is, especially on film music, where I sat in the middle of a or- big orchestra, um, you've got to do that. Then they'll go, okay, um, we're just going to go and watch that picture. So they go and watch the picture, come back. Okay, now changing this. And you, you find I've done one piece of music for four hours for a four-hour film session. Wow. And you have to be as good on the first one as you were on the last, as yeah. on the last one. And uh, you have to do it right every time. And so that's, after a while, you start going, Oh, it's good on that one. Like one more, right? I'm going to do one more. You go, oh god! And you might cock it up, or you yeah, might. Yeah. You go, oh, let's do another. Please do another one. You yeah, know, yeah. And, you know that's so. That's the skills that I you have to have as well yeah, as, yeah. as a reader. It's not just being frightened of semi quavers or key yeah, or whatever. It's, it's, it's seeing the you whole know. picture in it. Yeah. So, How so, did you go from like you know? Obviously, you're playing with your dad. Yeah. And then now we're talking about you know you know well, recording films okay. well I didn't go to college so I, I learned all of what I know college of I, life uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't do I didn't learn all of my reading knowledge all came from yeah. my own sort Studies. of studies yeah and, yeah, and getting, playing and that, yeah. I, I got where once I could start when I, once I started reading uh, places I mean what were 31st Kings with my dad where you do like a little dinner set while they're eating dinner and then you'd go off and there'd be a cabaret 
uh, yeah. which was really, really common. And you'd go in the band room and it, the guy would hand you his parts out and you'd talk through it. Yeah. And there'd be all sorts of tempo changes and everything. I mean, this is just the way it was done. God knows how it sounded. I've no idea. <laughs> but, you know, you had to go out and do that. And I t- was doing that from the age of 15 as well. Yeah. So you're really, really learning under pressure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if it annoys you that you didn't, you couldn't recognize that rhythmic p- p- piece then you'd go away and, you know, I'm going to get this together, you know what I mean? And remember that and phrase. so what like, I yeah. did was I bought, um, I had, my dad took me to um, a friend of his, of his generation, a, guy, a bass player called Roy Babington. I don't know if you ever heard no, of him. No. He used to play with Soft Machine. Oh, right, yeah, very, very, Machine, very yeah. really lovely, lovely man. He's still around. Um, and he took me to see him and uh, he said, right, he said, first of all, you, you should st- learn to play double bass because there is actually a method of, right, okay. pl- you know, yeah. the Simandl method. And was this is, your first it, lessons, it were? Yeah. Well, sort, sort of, but I didn't have a lesson with it. He just said, right, buy these books. So I bought um, uh, some double bass studies, which I've still got, big yeah. pile of them. And I, then I just, you know, set the metronome and try and get, get through them without yeah. making a mistake. I mean, that's what I was training myself for, to be a session musician, yeah. where people put a piece of music in front of you and, uh, you, you know, you have to play it. So yeah. I was just testing myself, really, at home, putting those things I would still play through them to this day, you know. And you so, play both, though, you play upright. Yeah, I didn't though, start yeah. playing upright till many years later, actually, that's another, another story. But uh, um, so I, that's how I got good at reading. Yeah. Um, what I did was the people I was working with, with my dad, I'd be like the odd drummer, like some old boy semi-pro drummer to come in I wouldn't really learn anything off of him but I re- learned how to not how to <laughs> drag a drummer with me yeah you know, yeah, learning yeah your yeah. own time yeah. trusting your own uh time um and groove with getting no help yeah and then, a, then another drummer would come in uh who was like a bit younger and and I would go wow this all feels so much easier you know yeah, so you're yeah, learning about yeah. different feels good people with good time bad time guitar players who can't play, can't read, can't play in time, people who play in time, and you're getting like your own average and your own feel about yeah, what you're yeah, good yeah, at, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. My dad had a great time, actually, and he, so he and I played with him, and it, it was always good fun. He was always right. We had a, um, a record collection when I lived at home, which is now reunited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah. he died, I'd got all of his vinyl. Um, and we'd we'd listen to Herbie Hancock, uh, Return to Forever. He was a pretty wow, hip yeah. dude, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and he all, was yeah. a big band arranger as well. So uh, he played me things. We used to drive to gigs together and uh, listen to music together. I, I mean, I can't I can't thank him enough. But really, it was it, it was an incredible experience yeah. as a young person to to have that sort of thing. And then I went to school and learned heard all the other music of my generation yeah yeah and, yeah, yeah. Um, of course I, my school everybody was into Genesis and Yes and things yeah like what were you into I, well, what I was, were I, your I, I was into that at all you weren't no 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 not in this like I, I couldn't bear it 